All right, Psalms 19, and we want to begin with verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7 says, The law of, and there it is, you can see the Lord all in capital letters. It says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. <clears throat> the statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Yahweh's law, we're told here, Yahweh's law is perfect. His testimonies are sure. His statutes are right. His commandments are pure. The fear of him is clean. And his judgments are right, true, and righteous altogether. Now, there are two questions that I want to pose to you regarding those six claims that we find in Psalms 19. <clears throat> that I doubt many people have ever asked themselves regarding this passage. First question, is what's found in those six claims factual? And if your answer is uh, to the first question is no, they are not, then, then uh, there's no reason for you to even answer the second question, and I'm not sure why you're here in the first place. <laughs> But if your answer to the first question is, yes, those six statements are factual, and uh, I certainly hope that's your answer, then I would ask you, do you believe those six claims? And you might be thinking or you might want to respond to that, well, didn't I just answer that with the first question? Well, no, not really or not necessarily. My first question requires only a mental assent to the validity of the facts that are found in those six claims. My second question is asking if you have personally, personally internalized the facts found in those six statements. That is, I'm asking if those six declarations that I just read to you and shared again are those six declarations personally yours? Do you not only, in other words, do you not only accept them as a fact, but do you personally believe, personally, down deep inside your very being, do you personally believe that Yahweh's law is absolutely perfect? with the fullest intent of what that word means. Do you, believe, do you believe his commandments are pure? Do you believe his statutes are right? And yes, even his judgments altogether righteous. Do you believe is what I want to know. Now, if you truly believe those declarations, and I'm sure I'm talking to some people who would say yes to that, I hope. And if you truly believe those declarations, if you have personally internalized them and literally taken them to heart, they, I guarantee you, will forever change your life. They will, I assure you, affect everything that you think and do from the moment you have done so, including whether you believe Yahweh's laws, His commandments, statutes, and judgments are inherent in the new covenant and therefore still in effect. The fact that Yahweh's law, as we are told there by the psalmist in Psalms 19, the fact that Yahweh's law is perfect, his commandments pure, his statutes right, and his judgments altogether righteous, compels us to ask the question, would Yahweh ever abolish that which is perfect, pure, right, true, and righteous? A rhetorical question if there ever was one. We, we 
do our cherry picking. There are things in that law that just don't sit real comfortable with us. One of those that will unquestionably test the resolve of the vast majority of even today what calls themselves fundamental conservative Christians is America's national idol. And uh, of course I think all of you here already know what that is from my estimation anyway, the United States Constitution. Now let me ask you again, do you really, really believe that Yahweh's law is perfect and his judgments altogether righteous? Do you really believe that? It is upon this paradigm that in the messages to follow, we will examine and we will scrutinize the United States Constitution. You know, we have all been told at one time or another, and most of us from a very small age, having been indoctrinated in public schools, that the Constitution is outside of the Bible. Even people have gone to the extent of causing, calling it an inspired uh, uh, document, that it is outside of the Scriptures perhaps the most godly, biblical, Christian document that man has ever came up with. We have all heard that from time to time. Well, how does it really measure up is what we need to be asking to Yahweh's perfect law. If that's the standard, if we have internalized that and that has become our standard, that is the standard. You know, forget all of the other things that people want, may want to measure it by. It has got to measure up one way or another. To be what, it is, what we have always been told that it is, it has, to be me- it has to measure then up to that standard as found in Psalms 19, 7 through 9. Jude uh, verses 3 and 4. Verse 3, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Verse 4 then says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying, our own, our, excuse me, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. By their rejection of his law, we're told that they turn the grace of God into licentiousness, into excessive indulgence of liberty and contempt of the just restraints of law. And how tragically that is where we find the vast majority of those who call themselves Christians today. I praise God some of us, myself included, were there. And by His grace, He's pulled us out. But if we take Psalms 19 to heart, And if we take Jude to heart, we need to understand that we've got a job before us. By God's grace of reaching our brethren out there who are in that boat. And I don't see any escape for it. I I see it as that serious of an issue. Um, What they are is essentially humanist dressed in Christian attire. Because without Yahweh's moral compass, every man becomes a law unto himself. I ask you again, do you really believe Yahweh's law is perfect and his judgments altogether righteous? I hope so. For not only the reasons that we just saw in the book of Jude, but because if you don't, you are really, really missing out. You know, our prayer should be the psalmist prayer in Psalms 119 and verse 18. In fact, I pray this every morning when I go to my, my scripture reading time in the morning. I pray this prayer. He's where David wrote and said, Open mine eyes, O Lord, of course. Open mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things from thy law. What an attitude. You know, that guy was just 
really downright strange if you look at it from modern Christianity's you know, perspective on God's law. What do you mean wondrous things from God's law? God's law isn't wondrous at all. It's a burden. It's, it's, you know, it's everything negative. Not to David and not to those who have truly taken Psalms 19 to heart, have internalized it and made it their own, that God's law is, in fact, perfect in every imaginable way. And his, his judgment's altogether righteous. Well, I hope in the three remaining messages, in comparing the Constitution, at least three parts of the Constitution with Yahweh's laws, with this foundation in mind, that um, we'll be even able to see and experience the wonder of Yahweh's law, hopefully more. I hope I can convey it in a way that you'll see it in even a more <clears throat> beautiful way than you've ever seen it before. But I wanted to start with this as the foundation. It, it, the, the point of the 30-part series I originally did, comparing the Bible, the Constitution to, the, to, the, to Bible law, um, the primer and the book to come, is not to focus attention on the Constitution. It's to deal with the Constitution as, as the document that most people, taking the best that man supposedly has ever came up with, at least that's how it's viewed, taking the best and showing how far it falls short in, 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 uh, in light of, of Yahweh's law, which is, in fact, perfect. Um, and that's, that's, that's my intention, is to put the focus on our king and his kingdom and his law, but only using the Constitution as a means. And also because if we are ever going to get back to the dominion that God intends for his people, um, this, which is America's national idol, has to be torn down, just like Gideon had to tear down his father's idol first before God could use him to dominionize. We have to tear down this idol. It stands in the way. You know, we're, we've, we've, we've been for some time, those who are interested in what's going on in America, who's concerned with what's here right now and, and what's to come in the future with our children, you know, we've been hacking away at the branches, whether it be, and I refuse to call it abortion, it's infanticide. It's time we quit using their terms and start calling it what, you know, it's not gay, it's sodomites. You know, there's no, there's no power in their terms. Let's quit using their terms. It's infanticide. But whether it be a branch, that's, a branch called infanticide, whether it be sodomy, whether it be the economy, whether, whatever it is that needs to be hacked away at, you know, every chance that we have that branch in our face, we need to hack away at it. But listen, we're never going to get the job done until we cut the tree down at its roots. And I guarantee you every one of the things that we face in America that we know today is ungodly and wicked and bringing our nation down and only going to get worse for our posterity is the result of the United States Constitution. It is Pandora's box that opened it up, uh, opened up and made everything that is wrong today possible. Um, and hopefully we'll see that better by the time we get done tomorrow, Lord willing.